I see Carol. Hi, Carol. Just trying to get my uh, iPad to cooperate. There's Catherine as well. Hi. That's better. I do apologise in advance. Um, I think my neighbour is trying to ruin my life today. Literally started hammering on his fence like five minutes ago. It's like, are you actually joking, pal? <laughs> Going live in a minute. We don't need to hear this racket. Oh, who else have we got? Let's see. Carol, Christine, Angela, Sylvia, Samantha, Liz, Christia, Josephine. Morning. Melissa's here as well. Yeah, much bangage going on on the fence next door. Giving him my best death stare. It hasn't detracted him from what he's doing. Very interesting. <laughs> Morning, Kimberly, Sabrina, Maria's here again. Welcome. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mums out there today. Whether you are mums of tiny humans, fur babies, happy Mother's Day if you're in the UK. So you can see this is looking quite a bit different to last week. Hi, Annie. So we've used exactly the same palettes. So there's no different pencils up here at all. But I have finished off the fish. And in fact, these two are drying, so I'm going to have to be very, very careful up here. Hi, Tina. So let's have a look at this section. So I'm just going to get my uh, notepad out of the way because I think that's going to end really badly if I don't shift it. Doesn't he realise important colouring things are happening? No, clearly not. He obviously is like, well, important garden things need to happen. Well, not right now, they don't, pal. <laughs> Hi Gina, finally I made one live, oh bless. <laughs> hi Mel, hi Lisa. So we're going to be working on the bottom edge of this picture today. So still with the ink tents, I've come up with a very, very neutral palette for the bottoms of the buildings. And then what I'm going to be doing is recycling some of these colours, including the gel pens and the sparkly paint to decorate the tops and other areas of the picture. So what we do on here today will be the final session on this picture. So you won't see how I finish everything off on here. What I want you guys to do is to do your own thing on some of the tops of these buildings. And that way we've got some nice differences with mine and yours, which I'll look forward to seeing. Hey, Gail. Hey, Gail. So without further ado, less blethering and more painting. So four new ink tents colours for the windows and the buildings. So if you're making notes, grab your pen, pencil and get ready. I'm going to chuck my pencils at this bloke if he doesn't pack it in. Seriously, apologies for the banging. It's the neighbour. <laughs> so we have Willow and Saddle Brown. So they're the two colours for the building walls. And I will tell you about my reason for choosing these particular ones. Hi Katrin. And for the windows we have Indian ink and charcoal grey. Indian ink and charcoal grey. So we'll just leave those there for just a little second. So we need something nice and neutral with the colour wheel, which of course we've been looking at. If I just take the water which is mainly blue and I move my colour wheel round to put blue in the pure colour slot, which is this one here. If we look at the complementary and then split complementary colours, we're in the orangey, red, orange, yellow, orange bracket, including these more earthy tones down here. So what I did was I had a look at my ink tents um, swatches here and instantly went for several of these sort of more earthy, reddy, orangey colours here and had a really good go at mixing a few of them together and the ones that I came up with that I liked the most was the Saddle Brown and the Willow. Catherine's dreaming in ink tents at the moment. Well, at least your sleep will be colourful, my dear. What can I say? <laughs> so let me get these uh, other two colours out of the way. So the darkest one in this palette is the Saddle Brown. So don't go by the tip of the pencil because the colours don't always look the same. Always swatch these before you have a little go. 
And what we'll do is we'll get some of the different colours down on this building and then we'll work on this side where I've already completed some. So let me zoom us in very, very slightly and just move this up the screen. Let's go for these ones. So with your saddle brown and glasses, if you need them as I do, there everything is, I can now see it again. We will go ahead and lay some of this colour down. So I have Prisma, uh, Prisma colour overlays for these guys as well. So some of the shadowing will be done in the Prisma colours over the top. But for now, um, using the principle that the darkest one of these two shades is going to go into the areas that would be darkest on here. And because we're going to be graduating colours again, we just ease off and get a little base of this darkest colour down. And that is what we mix this willow colour into. So we've got all the way up. So I haven't actually made a plan for this. Um, this was all done terribly last minute because we were out for the day yesterday. So I've been messing around with this this morning. My mum has been round for dinner. So we've had our evening meal at lunchtime today. And she's not long gone. So I don't know whether she's watching. She possibly is. But yeah, we'll see how we go with this today. Um, if we manage to get to an hour without any problems. We'll probably have a five minute break to let me download the video. And then we'll carry on for a little bit longer. I am actually going to throw my whole tin of pencils at my neighbour if he does not stop banging on his fence though. Have I mentioned that more than once? I think I probably have. <laughs> it's just typical that he would uh, come on while I'm doing this. So Willow is going on next. Hiya Shannon. The comments dried up again then. I was like, oh my god, we've had a black screen of death already. This isn't boding well. Bang, says Catherine. Yeah, very much so. My Catherine's just gone out for a walk. So our, our neighbour, he's very, very much into his garden. His garden is absolutely stunningly beautiful compared to all of the others around it, including mine. So we call him David Bellamy. If you're in the US, that may not mean anything to you, but David Bellamy was um, a guy on UK TV many, many moons ago. He was very, very keen on gardening and things. And I said to her when she went out for a walk, can you just go and have a word with David Bellamy, please? Please. <laughs> She's like, what, one word or two? It's like two, and they'll be quite short. <laughs> she was like, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> so back to Saddle Brown again. Don't waste your pencils, throw a hammer, says Annie. Tempting. Catherine's got several of those in her shed. <laughs> I'm going to come down to this little chap here as well. Yes, Liz, it is the neighbour hitting the fence. He did this to me, um, was it last week when I was on? I think it was. <sighs> never mind, never mind. But yeah, I hope whatever you're doing this weekend, you're having a lovely weekend. We had a time change overnight last night, so we have jumped ahead an hour in the UK. Very, very rude. That's an hour less in bed that I got last night. But yeah, we have gone forward into British summertime. Oh my God, seriously. Whatever hammer he's using. <laughs> Just think if I go and wrench it off him. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Anyway, let's get some of this down. I'm going to get some of the window colours down as well. And then again, we'll have to jump about a little because we have to wait for this to dry out thoroughly, of course, before we do the Prisma overlay. But it's very, very fun to see how many of you have been uh, falling down the ink tents trap since I've been doing these ones. So hopefully you found the series quite enjoyable. I think there's been quite a few of you that have been following on for this one. So do share your images in the group so that we can all see your progress. I can hear him say Alpine Rhododendron. Yes, definitely. He did have a lovely voice, didn't he, David Bellamy? All the guys in the US probably like, who? Do a little Google when we've finished on here and you'll see who I'm talking about. So again, because I'm going to be integrating the willow into this, I'm going to give just a little dusting of this towards the top of the building. Make sure that I've got a nice 
thick under layer of this um, around the bottom and then we work a little bit less hard with the overlay that we're doing. I think we might have a sparkly door on there. That's what I'm thinking. You asked a couple of weeks ago time change. Yes, I believe so. I really don't know why um, we still do it in this day and age, but yeah, very, very strange. I did feel um, slightly like I've been kicked in the head when I woke up this morning. I don't know why, but this particular time change when it goes forward always affects me more than the October one when we go back. Probably because I get more sleep, but um, yeah. <laughs> so what's Samantha saying? I may get the full ink tent set with your birthday money. You mean you got birthday money after you'd already spent most of your husband's money on castle art stuff? That is a cheeky win right there. <laughs> very, very good. I don't know. That's a super result. Lots and lots of colouring products. So I'm just going to overlay this back into that saddle brown layer as well. Of course, you know, the magic happens with these pencils when you hit them with the water. But we can give it a little nudge along by blending both of these colours one into the other. The October one kicks my butt, says Kimberly. Oh, really? <laughs> right, let's do some of these windows. I'm just wondering because this side's going to be very, very wet. So I'm going to pop the window colours into these little bits here, just so that I've got two different areas that I can be working with while we're waiting for the, uh, the first layer to dry up. So we've got Indian ink and charcoal grey. The charcoal grey is the lightest out of the two so we're going to start with the Indian ink. I can't tell if my um, phone screen is just a bit smudged or if that's not focusing terribly well. Hopefully it's not blurry. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on. So yeah although I won't be officially sort of finishing finishing this with you guys on screen I think it's nice because of what you've learned and the different colours, I know um, a few of you have said you're doing your own thing with the fish and, and such like anyway. I think it's nice because we have those subtle differences like we did on that chameleon project that we did a few weeks ago. Not blurry, says Catherine, that's good. I would imagine it's a double whammy and my specs need a little bit of a clean and so does my phone screen. But as long as you guys are seeing it nice and clear, then that's wonderful. So switching over to that charcoal grey and again you've got a nice range of greys and blacks in this ink tense range. Some of them sort of on the warmer side of the palette, some of them on the cooler side. These are more on the cooler side. So we're going to be using some of those Prismacolor cool greys to blend into these once they're nice and dry. Just wondering if there's any other cheeky windows I can do while I'm at it. I'm going to give myself a problem, I think, if I do them too. So let's leave them well alone. Number of this one again, please. I forget, Carol, that you like the numbers. So we have Indian ink, which is 2020, and charcoal grey, which is 2100. There we go. Let's have a look at Sandra. I'm having technical problems. What were those colours? Yes, Indian ink and charcoal grey, Sandra. We'll just keep them there just for a little second for those of you that are doing little notes and things. There we go. Looks good here, says Kimberly. Good eye. Right, back to. So, my trusty Caran d'Ache water brush. This one's already been on the go. Just going to give him, a, as you can see, that's me finishing the fish off and testing other palettes earlier on. So, I'm just going to give him a little nudge and hope that he doesn't go hysterical like he did this morning. So you are one step away from the bin, young man, and the new one coming out. I think we're okay. Right, let's get these ones activated first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to about face this, because of course we're blending from light to dark. So we're about to take a trip upside down. <laughs> oh dear, Melissa, are you having problems with your fur babies? Oh dear. Just get these lovely paints out of the way. Really hope that you're dry now, or this is going to end really badly. I think you are dry. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with the lightest end first. Luckily for this water brush, he hasn't gone too hysterical. There's probably a little more water here than I would want there to be. 
but that's okay. We can we can work with that. We just blend out any watermarks when we do that Prismacolor overlay. So just wiping my brush off there, just because I don't want to drag that dark pigment that I've started to pick up up into this top area, which will be the highlight. So I'm not really paying any attention remotely to where shadows and light areas as such would be on the face of these buildings. They're underwater or meant to be. All I want to do is create a little bit of a difference between light and dark areas. So there's no, no rocket science approach to what I'm doing here. We're just having a lighter bit and a darker bit. And that is as complicated as it's going to get. It's the month that doesn't realise how generous he's been this year. Unless he's listening, hopefully you're on headphones. If you're not on headphones, I've probably dobbed you in, which could be a low point. So soz. <laughs> Here we go. So, yeah, basically these um, brown tones will be used somewhere on all of these buildings. But there will be lots of sparkly gel pen. And there will be lots of repeated uh, palettes from the fish as well. It just ties the top of the picture down to the bottom. So just want to show you a couple of these buildings so that you can see what we're doing. And then I'm sure you will guys will absolutely wing it and it will look great. Hi, France. Ooh, France, I'm understanding like 70% of that. Hello everyone and thank you for your help, I think that says. Where's Barbara when I need her? Something, something. Metallic. Gel metallics. Hmm. I've got about 70% of that, France. I'm so sorry. You know, I was fluent in French when I left school, but it's one of these things when you don't use it, you lose it. But weirdly, I can understand more to hear than I can to read which is very strange. Last time me and Catherine were in France, I had a whole conversation with somebody. Up to this day, I have no idea where that, all that, that French came from when it came back to me. It's obviously in there somewhere. There we go. Just nudge these together. Unless he's connected to your phone, says Catherine. That's funny. <sighs> if he is connected to a phone, Catherine, he'll just be ordering himself his birthday presents and... Um, I'm sure he'll get his own back. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. So these are really, really nice sort of earthy tones. The nice warm browns, though, which is what I wanted to go with because we've got the um, orange and reds that we've used as well. Lots and lots of warm colours. And the colour wheel tells me that we're looking at warmer brown tones there are several browns to choose from in the ink temps range but we're looking for the warmer colors on this one there we go i'm just gonna whistle this round again and let's do these windows here we go there's no idea about technology ah so you think samantha you never know he may just surprise you so i'm just gonna work from the outside edge in let's just smush this gray and this black together. Hi Kay! And I'm going from the middle of this one, taking that to either side because of course I had a layer of that darker colour around the top edge and the side edges here. So it's always fiddly, um, these tiny little spaces, so just do the best that you can with them. That's why we do the overlay at the end. So just move that pigment around until I'm happy, clean the brush off and then we'll do this one. And I'm going to do some pretty sparkly things on the other side where I've already done some of this stuff. So going, you know, the colour wheel may not really be out much today. Um, the goal really with the bottom of the page here, we know that all of the colours that we've used complement each other. So the idea is just to anchor the top of the page down with the bottom of the page. So we just reuse the same colour palettes again and it just makes the page look really cohesive and really, really pretty. Just need to uh, dob that around a little bit more. There we go. Is she asking for a video on? I don't know, Annie. 
not a hundred percent sure I'm not sure I want, would want to spend a whole video on using these metallic paints because I do wobble about all over the place as you can probably see with this middle fish here I'm gonna have to sort of tart up some of these lines I think with my fine liner pen because I did go a little bit wobbly there um but yeah okie doke so let's have a look at this side now what i'm going to do for this roof on this building is i want to bring the colors of this fish over to the other side of the image so let me just unzoom slightly so i like my pictures to look balanced so what you'll see on these ones is there's an odd number of fish to start with so this is the only fish with these colours running through him at the moment. But we have two, two, two and two. What All I've done is I've varied which direction I've blended them in. So we've gone from the red to the orange and the red to the orange just to make it look a little bit different. But what I want to do is introduce some of the colours on this little guy over to this side of the picture. Excuse me. And similarly, I want to pull some of these colours from this side of the image over to this side of the image. So you can probably have a random stab in the dark at what I'm going to be using on the roofs of these two buildings. So we'll work on this side first because this is still dry and I shall do this side first. That's actually quite dry. So I'll crack on with this bit first, I think. So we are on palette. <laughs> So that's the mallard, the apple and the sherbet lemon. So where is mallard? You always hide from me. Here we go. She said she's, oh, that's useful, Kimberly. Thank you. She's ordering the metallics. Oh, bless her. What's Maria saying? I'm waiting for Herbie to bring my Amazon order from the UK. Oh, how wonderful. You're going to have a very happy day when um, that lot arrives. <laughs> So here we go, apple green, which is 1400. I know my Carol likes her numbers. Sherbet lemon, which is 0100. And mallard green, which is 1230. So just keep those there for a little second. Oh, France, how wonderful, thank you. Let me see. I to fly mine saw this video. Oh, wonderful. See, France, I've got like, what, 60% of that roughly. <laughs> which is good. Right, let me just have a mouthful of my juice. Oh, that's so nice, but so cold. So we go on with the Mallard Green first because we're working from dark to light. So what I'm gonna do is start this down here. This will be sparkly gel pen, I think, on this bit. So I'll get some of this down. I'll do the one on the other side as well. Just gonna move my underlay paper across a little bit or I was gonna have a bit of a line appearing then. Oh, France, that's so good. I'm so pleased. Honestly though, you guys, just use what you've got. Unless you really, really desperately want the exact same thing I'm using, please don't feel the need to spend all of your hard-earned money on exactly what I'm using. There's loads and loads of different products you can use sparkly things and pretty things I always feel so bad when everyone's like I've, I've ordered every single thing you've used on the video because I loved it and I'm like oh my god make forcing everyone to spend money it makes me feel bad and happy all at the same time <laughs> let's see what Elise is saying is everything in ink tents um it's in ink tents prismacolor glitter pens and sparkly paint you will have missed the other videos but if you hop over to youtube at least um you'll find them there so you've, you've all you did was miss them live you'll still get exactly the same content it's all uploaded through there so i'm just tapering off again with the mallard greens of course we're going to layer the next lightest color over the top so we move over onto our apple green pencil there we go don't feel bad we order because we like it, says Kimberly. I do feel bad though. <laughs> I can't help it. It's, um, I think I feel the most bad actually about those Arteza paints because nine times out of ten, they're never in stock. Um, I was so lucky to get that set gifted to me. 
because I think if I'd have been looking for them for myself, I'd have been hugely frustrated by now. So I'm just going to leave the tiniest little bit of a white edge on that one. I'm just integrating the apple green into the mallard green. So the same technique as you've seen on the fish. So sherbet lemon, which is the last colour in this trilogy that we're using here. So I'm just put a nice strong pop of that at the very edge here. Smush a little bit of it into the apple green layer. There we go. So let's get the other side done at the same time. So, oh God, what are the colours? Deep violet. Uh, oh, that was a lucky, uh, a lucky grab. So I'm going to go for the other palette as well. So we have Deep Violet, which is 0760. We have Thistle, which is 0720. And Fuchsia, which is 0700. What's Kate was saying? I love my art Arteza paints and wouldn't have known about them. Ah. Glad to oblige. I'd, I think I'd had them in my wish list and then one of the other girls ordered them for me and sent them to me. So I'd had them in my wish list but actually done nothing about it. And since I've got them, I can't stop using them. It completely satisfies my magpie gene. <laughs> so Deep Violet is the first one. Let's have a look what's Kimberly saying. Bye and Shannon. I use everything I've ever bought after watching you all the time. Well, that's good. It's it's awful to have supplies neglected in the cupboard. And what's Kimberly saying? Changed my mind and ordered them yesterday. My set didn't have the colours I was looking for. Oh, you got them on Amazon US, Kimberly. Melissa's here as well. And Melissa, you just had yours arrive yesterday, I think, wasn't it? Was it yesterday? Or was it this morning? I forget. I forget. But yeah, um... I'm, I'm really sort of getting into this. Um, this is Deep Violet, by the way, that I'm just checking down on here. Um, I'm really enjoying my mixed media projects at the moment. Um, very much so. I mean, my ink tents, um, I only got to grips with after watching uh, another lady who's actually in this group. I don't even know how to pronounce her name properly. Sani Ruazi. Um, Apologise, Sani, if I've completely uh, crucified this, the pronunciation of your name there. But she got me in understanding how to use these and since then I've just tweaked away at it well, you know where she does loads of layers of them um, I don't I prefer to do this overlay method that I'm using um, but we all have those art supplies that are at the back of the cupboard and sometimes you just you feel too coward to use them I do as well but these mixed media pages are really floating my boat right now and it seems to be floating your guys' boats as well What's Lisa saying? Yeah, I saw the hobby crafts one, uh, Lisa, when I was in there last week. I was very tempted, but I, st I restrained myself. Sandra wouldn't have bought them. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Yesterday, it was Melissa. Yeah, Melissa, yesterday. And only sent a thing through. <laughs> but yeah, I did see those paints in hobby craft, and I was like, whoa, look at them, six quid, shiny. And then I got the look, and I was like, yeah, okay, maybe I don't need them. <laughs> Not that she would have stopped me because she never does. In fact, she positively encourages me at times, but sometimes you just got to stop. So Thistle going on next. Thistle. Yes, says Gail Sunny Rorazzi. She is a master. She manages to use like millions of layers of ink tents and her page doesn't crinkle or wrinkle. And she blends like millions of colours together and oh, her stuff's just wonderful. You should check her out on YouTube, guys. Um, Sunny Heart Colours, I think it's called. Um, have a little look if you want to see somebody who really, really, really knows how to use ink tents. I just mess about with them. Let's have a look what Frank's is saying. Ah, uh, we've seen pictures, haven't we, Frantz, of that um, lady that you've been colouring with and things. She's very, very good. Your ink tents was at the back of the cupboard, Melissa, and now you've used them, your mind's blown. You've done so, so good with them. Like, so me and Melissa, we chat behind the scenes um, anyway, sort of most days, and she's been sending me progress shots of her pages. fan blooming -tastic. It's so good. I love seeing the things that you guys are working on. It's helping you guys to do stuff is what keeps me going. It's so good. 
Right, let's get some fuchsia on. So fuchsia going on at, on now. I can no longer speak. 700. <laughs> Keep looking at my phone and I'm like, oh God, we've been going half an hour and this time last week it was when it kicked me off. Please God, it doesn't kick me off again today. I literally can't cope. <laughs> so I'm just going to overlay that into that thistle layer. It's exactly the same technique as we've used on the fish. Nice thick layers going on so that we have less tweakage to do. There we go, get them out of the way. And then let's activate. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna activate this one first and then I'm gonna come back to the buildings and I'll show you the overlay. We need to see more pics of everyone's pages, says Catherine. Yeah, we do. I do. It's what keeps me going. <sighs> right, come on, pen. Here we go. So exactly the same again, we activate from the lightest colour going down. So aren't these just delicious when the water hits them? They just look lovely. I'm so in love with these pencils. And it's funny because still the videos that I do, when I look at my stats on how many times they've been viewed and stuff, the ones using ink tens are always the most popular. But you can understand why when you see how stunningly beautiful these are when you activate them with water. They're just delicious. So we see that lovely thistle layer starting to wake up now. We get this lovely pinky purple. And then as we smush this over going across, we get that beautiful, beautiful deep violet coming in. I don't know how you chat and do this at the same time. Well, I can't always chat and do this at the same time, Carol. You've been on my lives for ages. Sometimes what comes out of my mouth <laughs> doesn't always connect, does it? <laughs> Which I've been assured is one of the things that you guys really enjoy listening to. <laughs> In fact, my best friend at work, sometimes she'll hop on. So she doesn't colour, but she'll hop on um, over on Instagram and she sometimes catches up on YouTube and she'll say to me, it's so funny, Suzanne, and you're chatting away and then you go exactly how you do at work and nothing you say makes any sense. And they keep coming back for me and I'm like, yeah, cheers for that. <laughs> so funny. I don't know. It cracks me up. Still on the fish, says Kimberly. Your ink tents have been collecting dust since the chameleon page. Get them dusted off, Elise, and get them used. Definitely. Right, because we're going from light to dark, I'm just going to have this on sideways for this little bit here. So I'm just making uber, uber sure. I have to say a certain word for Gail, do I? Carol's laughing. I take it you're laughing at my friend. Um, yeah, she is funny. She comes on and she's like, oh, you've really relaxed me tonight. But you lost the plot a few times, didn't you, when we were talking about such and such? And I'm like, oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. We we have many a laugh about it. You ought to see me in meetings. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, Gail, that word is coming and it's coming in volume. All will become clear in about 90 seconds. <laughs> oh, that's my Catherine back. I just heard the front door go. So let's... Oh, that really pops. I love this colour combo so much. It really, really pops. My friend reviews you. Yeah, she does. She does. So funny. She finds me relaxing and amusing all at the same time, which is, you know. <laughs> right. Doesn't matter if I wobble about too much on this bit because we're going to be um, gel penning the life out of these semicircle type things here anyway but I really don't want to get too carried away in this corner bit let's just drag a little bit of this dark pigment along the base here there we go my friend reviews you yes she does it makes her laugh a lot <laughs> right around we go let me show you the overlay on here so got some big versions of these pencils because all the ones that I'm using are little tiddlers so let me just grab the ones that I need now which one are you 
or your thingy on there. Let's get you out for that. So I'm just going to sharpen these up. I'm going to get the first one in the pencil extender. And Gail is going to be very, very happy because the first colour that I'm going to be using. So we're in Prisma Colour Overlay and the first colour on the table is chocolate. So 1082 for Carol. Gives you inspiration, Sarah. That's nice, thank you. So chocolate is our first overlay colour. That's chocolate. There you go, you're happy now, Gail. <laughs> she likes it when I say chocolate. I have no idea why. <laughs> so here we go. So I'm going to go straight into this bottom area down here. Gail's giving me three big cheesy grins. I'll have to just keep saying it now, won't I? Which will probably sound creepy for the rest of you, but Gail really does like hearing me say chocolate. I don't know why. <laughs> so here we go. Yay, says Melissa. <laughs> so whisper soft pressure with this. Remember, we're not trying to obliterate the uh, ink tents. We're just smoothing things over a little. So you can just see, if you compare this side to this side, it just smooths it out really, really nicely. I think I've naffed that bit up. I might have to redo that, but that's fine. I'll redo it later on. So again, nice and gently. And this is where you can just squeak that pencil into the edges if there's any areas where you haven't quite got your ink tents in. Sounds so wonderful with my accent. <laughs> Of all the words, though, I'm trying to think the last time I was over in the States, um, what was it I was saying? And the guy at the hotel kept saying, will you say that again? I can't think what it was. It'll come to me. It will come to me. I know that when I was at the airport um, one time and it was like a, a morning flight, so we were having breakfast and I asked um, one of the women behind the stand thing, um, can I have an orange juice, please? She nearly fell over and said, oh, please say that again. Let's say what? Say orange juice again. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Made me laugh. Right, next colour. David Bellamy stopped banging, thank God. Annie suggested that we throw a hammer. And I said, you've got several in your shed. Very big lump hammers. You have got very big lump hammers, but that would be quite harsh. You just say chocolate properly, says Carol, just my opinion. <laughs> oh, hi, Diane. There's no such thing as late. I hope you had a lovely brunch. And Melissa says everything just sounds better with a UK accent. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> so light umber is the next colour, so 941. And again, I have a little dude here on the side that's very, very well used. What was that thing that at uh, that hotel in New York that that receptionist lady kept getting us to say because she liked what we were saying? What was it? Can you think? No. I can't think. No. It's going to do my nutting because I can't remember. I'm not 100% sure it was. I'm sure it will come to me. Right, light umber. So we just do the same. We just pick up on where we stopped with that chocolate colour. Nice gentle pressure. Just smooth everything over. I don't know what the hell I've done with this. I'm sure it'll look better later on. So we'll put a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight on as well, I think. We've got some golden rod as well. I think I've maybe gone a little bit too um, snap happy with the golden rod on that one, but that's fine bugging me what was it I was saying I don't know what it was but she was like oh my god you sound just like the queen your accent is so perfect I'm like actually it's not it's a mismatch of a Lancashire accent which is where I'm from originally and a Northamptonshire accent it's not proper Queen's English at all <laughs> so we're going to just do a little bit of shadowing in in sepia now so 948 Kimberly's the same, love an English accent. See, we're all the opposite. I love the way that you guys all speak. It's just wonderful. We have a guy um, who, he's like a carpet fitter. So we've had um, him come down a, a few times to put carpets in for us. And he's from, where was it? Phoenix, I want to say. I think it was Phoenix. And um, 
he was like doing our living room carpet for us and so we were sort of moving bits of furniture and stuff around and I said to him when he was mostly finished with what he was doing I said oh am I okay to um to hoover now and he's like oh yes ma'am I was like oh say that again like Gail has actually recorded herself saying that because I love hearing <laughs> you guys say that so yeah it's probably the same as the chocolate gag really isn't it <laughs> So a little bit of golden rod, so 1034. I'm just going to use this as the highlight colour because it's quite a bit lighter. So I'm just going to go on the side with this because I don't want to press quite as hard. I just want to give this a little bit of a lift, lighten it up a tiny touch. Grandmother was from Lancaster too. Ah, okay, Gail, see, I need a recording of you again at your earliest convenience so that I can just keep listening to it. <laughs> so funny but yeah it's just it's so polite like nobody says that to you in the UK at all you're just like and when you say you're welcome after everybody has said thank you I love that as well very much so southern accent says Carol yes you've got a beautiful accent so back on with the chocolate again here we go I'm not gonna bother with the pencil extender I really can't be uh, can't be bothered so I'm just going to glaze over with it in my hand. It's so, so tiny. So, so tiny. But yeah, um, he, he had a lovely accent. We've had him over a few times actually to replace little bits of flooring and stuff for us. And um, I could listen to him talk all day, but his accent's really interesting because it's it's very Southern, but it's kind of mixed up together with a Northamptonshire British accent as well. So it's quite funny. Like some things he says, you're like, you've got a bit of like a twang to your accent and I can't make it out and then some things he says and you're like hang on a minute are you American he's like oh yeah I am so then that was a full-on conversation about um all the things American that I absolutely adore so much fun so I'm just gonna glaze this colour over again nice and gently I keep looking at my phone I'm like please don't give me a black screen of death please don't please don't please don't some new phones, so hopefully it was something to do with the old phone, that was the problem. So I'm going to go on again with the light umber. What's Melissa saying? I just said chocolate out loud, it sounds so much better when you say it, Suzanne. <laughs> yeah, but I would think the exact same if I was hearing you say it. I'd be saying it sounds better when you guys say it. <sighs> but yeah. Right, so really sort of speedy overlay on this bit. And then we'll pop a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight on again. So just back to that golden rod. I'm just gonna lighten up the very top here. So none of these browns exactly matches what's gone on underneath, but it's just enough so that it smooths it over. I don't know what I was thinking over here. I'm gonna have to uh, mess about with this. If you keep saying the same word, I can't even speak. If you keep saying the same word, it sounds weird after a while, says Catherine. <laughs> That's if you can actually speak when you're trying to say things. Right, let's just glaze a little bit more of this light umber on because I'm actually not happy with how that's looking at all. It's probably because I was chatting with my mum when she was here, so I wasn't fully concentrating when I was doing this uh, trial layer. That's why this overlay technique is so good because you can just tweak any bits that aren't looking quite as you want them to. There we go. That's better. So let's have a see. We've got the overlay to do up here as well. Let's get some of the ink tense bits on this and then let's do some sparkly stuff. So just do the overlay real quick on here. So we want a little bit of parrot green, so 1006. And again, just whisper soft pressure. Just smooths over any of these areas that aren't sitting quite as we want them to be. So you don't need to keep sharpening your pencil. Actually, a dull point when you're doing overlay is much, much better and having a sharp point because we don't want all sort of stop start marks all over the place on this so you're much better with like a, a flat blunt tip really on your pencil 
And then we're going to switch over to some spring green, so 913. Oh crikey Sandra, I bet that sounded very interesting. Here in Wales and then had a mixed American Welsh accent. Wow, that would have been very fun. I just find the Welsh accent sort of like very sing-song, it's beautiful. But yeah, that would be really interesting with an American accent as well. It's funny actually, the last time we were in Canada, um, the hotel that we were staying in had got this really lush car that you could, Gail knows how much I love um, American trucks and like pick up, I think you guys call them pickups over there. And um, they would sort of pop you over to wherever you wanted to go and stuff if it was available. And we were chatting with this guy and I couldn't quite peg his accent at all. And actually, um, he used to come from Huddersfield, which is not that far away from where I'm actually from. So he would like break from like Canadian into a northern accent, which was really fun to hear. So a little bit of yellow chartreuse just going on the top here. There we go. So let's do some pretty pen things and then we'll do some ink tents things. So looking at the colours that I've used on this little guy here, there is um, some of this sparkly paint, which I may or may not use on this. I know I've got the blue and gold Pentel pen and I've got the blue and gold one on there. So let's reuse some of those. So that would be that one and this one. This one's going to be in a world of pain if it performs how it did last week when I was using it because it was an absolute joke. So the dual metallics and we are in blue and gold and yellow with metallic green. So I think what we will do is because we're going straight on to like a, an area of water here, I'm not going to use the really dark colour on this bit because it's not going to show up. So I'm going to go on with that. Um, yellow and metallic green one so that just covers up the little ink tents slip that I had into that shape so that's why I do, oh, do you know what this flipping pen I just get my uh we had this conversation at the beginning of the week did we not and you're doing it again and of course this inanimate object that I'm scolding can completely understand what I'm saying clearly here we go that's better. Honestly, it's a good job I've got a spare one upstairs, which I instantly didn't think to get out of my pot. Bang, says Catherine, I know. So if you ever have a problem with a gel pen, give it a good whack on a bit of paper. Suddenly they start to cooperate again. It's very, very frustrating. Right? So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this on these wee shapes in here as well. And in here. So the whole time at the bottom of this image, it's going to be you reusing stuff that I've already used. Ooh, says Liz. I know, you guys aren't keeping up with me today. Normally somebody's gone ooh and ah by now. It's obviously me um, battering this pen on a pad that's uh, got you all silent. <laughs> Let me just have a sip of my juice. Noir, says Annie. <laughs> I think my Catherine might have just made some caffeine. Did I hear the coffee machine? Oh, you booty. Thank you, Pookie. Thank you. Nearly. Mm. What forgot? Irish cream. Irish cream. Thank you. What pen is that, says Jennifer? I will show you. Just stirring my coffee. Mmm. Oh, that's good. So these are Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallics and this particular one is a yellow and metallic green. Incidentally, I'd like to sort of hasten to add that these are normally relatively well behaved, but just this one's getting to the end of, uh, end of the ink in the barrel and that's why it's behaving like a bit of a plank. Oh, that coffee was good. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, basically what I've been using on the fish, I'm going to be using on the bottom and it's just going to tie both areas of this image in together. So we may or may not be using sparkly paint today. We'll just see. We'll see where we go. But this will be the last session. Right, you. I'm going to be 
going into the bin in disgrace if you keep doing this. <sighs> right, carry on. Blooming thing. I don't know. Note to self, when it does it a week ago, get your spare from your spare stash before you go live. Because otherwise, you have to thump the hell out of the pen on a pad. <laughs> so annoying. So I'm going to some stripey down here as well. We'll see how that bit looks. So I've got another colour on him. No, it's just the two. It's that like lemony paint. Difficult to get all of them in the US. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I think... Pentel themselves only ship to the UK and Ireland, I believe. I think you're kind of stuck with um, Amazon uh, US, which sometimes has in stock and sometimes doesn't. I'm not sure whether, I'm trying to think where there's singles of these. I've recently found some sellers on Amazon that has these that do sort of open stock ones. So whether there's anybody over the pond there at your end that would have single open stock of them, I really don't know. Hi Jeanette. So I'm going on to the blue and gold now. So we will pop this. I see now you're working beautifully. Just have a word with your little co-worker who's now lying on the table next to me see if we can get that one to start cooperating so i'm just recycling really the colors that i used on the fish top right corner just balances things out nicely strictly speaking i should really wait until the green one's dry before i uh, jump in with this one but as long as i'm careful we should be all right eBay might have them Salison, yeah, maybe, or even Etsy. I don't know whether Pentel are ever going to sort of consider opening the market out. Um, I think there would be a decent demand for them if they did. Because they are really quite beautiful pens. So I'm thinking, I'm going to do this bit here. Mm. I will think on that. So, I think what I am going to do is, hmm, what we do that bit with, I'll do this, so, this is where my thought processes take me to, you guys. So, let's do the zigzag in this colour, and then I will let it dry and consider what I'm doing with the other bit. I might even leave that white, the in-betweeny bits, I don't know. Or might, maybe it'll be gold. Decent bargain. Pound each, says Alison, in Clinton's. Yes, my local Clinton's was selling off some of theirs. And about a fortnight ago, I got some for 20p. That was an absolute belter of a result. So let's go into... Let's get the, like a stripe going here. So what I'll do is, where I'm not sure about what colour I'm going to use, I kind of leave it and slapped in a bit more of the picture and then decide from there. But we'll get a bit of a stripe thing going. And let that dry. So if I just flash that under the lamp, and you see how sparkly beautiful that is. So, so nice. So let's get a little bit of the um, ink tense colours down around this building. So, oh, Barbara, you're here. Excellent. So back to the willow and the saddle brown. So we'll go on with the saddle brown first. So I think what we will do is do almost like an, an all around shadowy bit under these overhangs. And then I'm just going to taper the pressure off towards the middle here because we'll have the lighter one towards the middle. Just being a little bit careful that we don't pick up that wet glittery pen. So I've got the overlay to do on the other side, which I will do in a minute or two. Hi Dominique, coming up to the hour. Thanks Catherine. 
I'm like, what do I do? Keep it going and hope for the best or jump off for five minutes? Oh, God. Decisions, decisions. I do feel it would be better to come off. It could have been my old phone. I don't know if that was the problem or whether it was Facebook. But so far, this phone's behaving itself. So on with the willow. So just join that up to the saddle brown and bring that straight up and into the middle. So we just blend that in slightly differently with the water brush because we're obviously going to be going from the middle up and the middle down on this one. Get a nice coverage of that on. So I think what we will do is we'll have that one with some gel pens. So we'll go back on with the saddle brown into here. So I'm just going to go along the base with the darker one to be blooming careful with the water brush because they do activate with water which would be a really interesting look but and that's me on with the willow again so what we'll do is we'll break this up with some gel pen and then choose a colour to go up onto this bit so let's have a look at this one so saddle brown again so i'm going to go down into this darkest area down here and again just taper that off and it'd be more of this darker color down here because we would have lots of shadow and things down here well and wonderful magical city says barbara thanks it's more fun at this end though this is the colorful bit this end will be better when we've done a little bit more work on it. But yeah, this will be the last session on this one. So whatever we don't work on, you guys just work on and do your own thing because you've absolutely got the skills to do it. You've got the palettes to do it. And then I will very much look forward to seeing what you've done. Now, I'm going to have those, I think, in black. So let's do the saddle brown again here so again I'm just gonna go darkest towards the bottom taper that off a little bit we'll do it on this bit as well it's the darkest bit at the bottom taper it off and then back on with the willow keep having to look at these because I can't actually retain what the names of them are quite ridiculous there we go just smush them both together and I'm just going to tidy up you can just see a little, of a little bit of edgy bits in here that I didn't quite get the pencil into there we go right I'm going to activate it then I'm going to come off for five minutes and then I will restart as again just because I don't want to get kicked off so let's do the uh let's do the walk brush bit and then I'm going to go for five minutes and restart it again so I'll see if I can do it this way around we'll see if it works so Activate him from the top edge first and just smush these together down to this darker colour down here. There we go. And then the same again. And a part of me is tempted to just leave it running. Don't know if I'm tempting Providence by doing that, but we'll see. There we go. And the same with these bits. So just activate from the lightest colour and then integrate that into the saddle brown layer down here. Please show the whole pick before you go off. I can do that. I can do that as long as it doesn't kick me off. You know what it's like on here, it kicks me off. It's like, Nat, nah, we've heard enough of your drivel today, Suzanne. Off you go. <laughs> so annoying. Right, so we've got lots of that lovely dark saddle brown down here. There we go. That's as close into those corners as I want to nudge that. So again, we'll do the same up here. Just activate all along the top, 
just being careful near that gel pen because the pen tells they will activate with water. Gives an interesting effect actually, which I found out quite accidentally. So just pick up that darker brown underneath. It just gives us a nice line of shadow under here, which of course will deepen with the uh, those are the colours and then we've got shadow top and bottom here so get a nice portion of the middle bit done and go up towards from the middle to the top. Get those all blended together and the middle to the bottom and just being careful of that gel pen because they do like to activate themselves with water. Probably be quite an interesting look actually. Just carry on picking those bits up there. And down the side here. There we go. And let those dry up. Oh guys, what do we do? Let's keep going. Let's just see how we go. Let's keep going. So Carol wants to see the whole picture, so let me just unzoom can probably just about get the whole picture in so if you take a snap carol i'll keep that there for a little second and then we'll go up for the bottom so can't quite get everything in under frame there we go so i think we will go on now so we've alternated sides we've matched up that fish with that corner that fish with that corner we want some of this nice fiery color in as well which i think i'm going to do on this bit of the roof here so let's start getting the ink tents layer put down so if i disappear it's not through choice i will be back so let's just keep it going and see where we get so i'm going to show you the palette for this one so we have hot red, which is 0410, scarlet pink 0320, and cadmium orange 0250. Oh, hey, Josephine. You got the picks. Brilliant, Carol. <laughs> Let me just have another mouthful of my coffee before we carry on. Mm. That is so good. <clears throat> just going to give these a wee sharpen because it's a bit more of a fine area I just want a better tip on these guys they're a little bit blunt this is my lovely doll 133 carol as usual that you sent me it's such a good sharpener right here we go so hot red Hot red first, so hot red 0410. And let's see, so we'll have the lighter edge sort of diagonally across the middle here, just using the shape really as a guide. So if we integrate some of this into the corner and taper off again, so less pressure. And then we do the same from this edge coming down. Now if we go back to colour wheel theory we know that the three primary colours are red, blue and yellow. So I know that I'm perfectly safe and it's not going to look clashy or horrible to put this hot red directly next to this deep blue of the water. So if you're ever unsure just have a look at the colour wheel, which of these colours is going to clash with the blue and that's the ones not to use. So I'm going to do the same with this all the way down. So you just taper off. Just being a little bit careful because we've got slightly damp ink tents going on there. So same again, more pressure at the base taper that off slightly. Let's just carry on all the way along here. And the same on this one. See every time the comments stop I'm like oh my god has my phone gone. You guys just need to keep talking to me about whatever. 
looks like panic otherwise. So again, doing exactly the same thing, just tapering off, that's where the next colour is going to hit. And of course, doing most of this in ink tents, you will find that you have to sort of dot about from area to area because you're always going to have a little bit that's drying and, and a little bit that you're working on. So just a whisper of that. Oh, Shannon's been telling her friend to get this sharpener as well. I know, it's so good. So Scarlet Pink is our next, so 0320. So integrate that in. I'm waiting for the black screen of death comment. I know you've you've had it a couple of times. I'm just literally waiting for the black screen of death. Um, hopefully it won't happen. But I can see that my um, on my iPad the image is jumping slightly. So I'm just getting a feeling in my water that we could end up with um, a little bit of a comedy gold moment in a minute or two. So if I do go, um, just give me a couple of minutes. Make sure that the video is shared on group and um, I'll be back. I'll be back as they say. Quite used to these technical hitches now. It's um, just, it is what it is. So I'm just overlaying this scarlet pink into that hot red colour. So obviously the water will blend it, but we just give it a little bit of a guiding nudge by integrating these colours together. And this, so we do the same all the way down and then this middle bit will be the cadmium orange. So there will just be a little bit of a hint of that on there because it's a much smaller shape. I feel like taking a nap, says Josephine. <laughs> so cadmium orange. I'd take a nap if I was listening to me as well. <laughs> Although I know that's not what you meant. <laughs> so we just blend this over this middle bit. So it's just about reusing some of the things that we've already used. So we will be using those sparkly paints as well, I think, on this one. I've obviously got the windows and things to do, but you've seen me do windows. Um, that bit's not rocket science, so I don't think you need to see me do millions and millions and millions of windows to know what you're doing. Right, where's my brush gone? There it is. There was quite a lot of like little bits of residue coming off there. So I'm just going to use the brush just to get rid. And then let's get this little bit activated in here. I'm going to give myself a nice fold over, a nice clean bit of uh, kitchen paper. So we just make sure again that the brush is clean, which it is. Just going to give him a little nudge. Because of course it's dried out just a tiny bit. Slightly too much of a nudge, Suzanne. There we go. So with this, we blend in exactly the same way. We're going to blend from the lightest bit into the darkest bit. So we're going to introduce the brush into the middle. Wake up this lovely orange. And then blend backwards. So get a really nice pop of that hot red at the top and we know that that's going to sit really beautifully next to the blue because of what the colour wheel shows us so I will get the colour wheel out in a little second and just show you guys hey Bev let's just clean my brush off in between and we pick up that cadmium orange pick up that scarlet pink and then into the hot red Again, you know, we will be tweaking this with our Prismacolor overlay anyway. So where we have bits of watermark, don't matter. Don't matter at all because we're going to tweak this. So I'm just cleaning my brush off before I hit the orange. Because of course, if I don't do that, I'm just going to have a big red splodge in the middle. Which is not the look that we're going for. And down into the orange again. So little circles will just keep those colours blending together beautifully. Just going into the edges here and again, clean off the brush. Can you blend with any pencil, says Sarah? Yeah, sure you can. I'm just using Prismacolor because they were handy when I was doing my trial runs really, but whatever set that you have, 
you can use so um you know castle um polychromos whatever really you can blend over with anything that you've got that has a similar shade oh there's alexandra hey alexandra so alexandra is always telling me how much she loves hearing my voice and i heard alexandra's voice earlier on this week because she was on YouTube with her friend and she was doing some of this exact page. So I was able to hear her voice, which was so cool. Really, really cool. Like I was well chuffed. So yeah, I've heard you as well now, Alexandra. <laughs> so we will let this, this one start to dry out. I think what we'll do is we'll get the little bit of paint on to this edge bit and onto this roof as well and then we'll move over onto the other side so at the moment we are using these colours into the middle so as you can see from some of these other ones that I've used I've got an option of a gold paint or I've got an option of a yellow paint and I think I'm going to go for the yellow one just around this bit just think maybe you need a second to dry because I don't want it to bleed water onto water. So we'll let him dry for a little second. And on this one, we will use something different. So if we have a little look at what we've got sitting between each other up here. So at the moment I have this fish's palette onto here. I think something purpley is going to look nice up on this one and down here as well purple will sit quite nicely so I think I might use a purple roof on this one so let's get the paint going sure you sound better well I disagree I think you sound better Alexandra <laughs> hi Kelly oh bless second week after chemo oh bless big hugs Kelly stay strong Stay strong. Bless you. Right, so purple. I'm going to go for this plum purple here. I did a really rotten swatch of it there. This one's much better. You see how lovely that is? So, these are those Arteza paints. So, Melissa, get them ready because we're about to use them. So, to get mine going, I just use one of these little pipette things and just introduce a little drop or two of water in there. It just means that the paintbrush doesn't have to do quite as much work. I'm going to get this on the side because that will be easier for me to paint. Get the paint off to the side as well. Yeah, big hugs, Kelly. That's so difficult. So, so difficult. Stay very, very strong. Right, so paintbrushes, I'm using Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolour brushes. This is a three round. Really, really nice brushes these ones are. They keep um, a nice point and things. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to get this out of the road because I'm going to have my hand through it all over the place otherwise. So let's stick it up here. Yeah, really, really nice little paintbrushes these. Now, I know that I will go absolutely all over the place with this. What you find with these watercolours is you can think that you're going all over the line. And actually, as it dries, it will shrink back. Sometimes you're over the line, sometimes you're not. Because this one's quite opaque, I'm actually just going to go over the whole thing. If you go over the main line art, like this bit here, what you can do is you can use a fine a black fine liner just to retouch it when it's dried. I've had to do that with a couple of the fish. And you wouldn't know. So if you do wobble about when you're using these, don't worry. There are like little hacks that you can do to just sort of get your line art put back in again. How's Catherine? She's good. She's upstairs, so I don't know what she's doing actually. Whether she's took a tablet up with her and she's reading or something. But yeah, she's good, thank you. We had a road trip yesterday, which was really, really lovely. I went to a nice retail park and um, I came home with a few bits and bobs. What's the name of the Pentel pens? 
that's it Kimberly yes the dual hybrid ones they're the ones that I'm using I came home with a couple of pieces of crystal including a necklace that I'm wearing at the moment and I absolutely adore teddy bears and um, they've got a teddy bear shop there and we came home with a new stife bear and a new jelly cat rabbit which I'm absolutely delighted with no art stores there though which I was very upset about because of course I haven't got enough art supplies to sink a battleship which I have but yeah we had a lovely road trip yesterday so it was it was so warm here I mean I know a lot of you guys over in the states in certain areas get really really sort of warm weather and things a lot of the time it was like 17 or 19 degrees yesterday there were people out in shorts I was only in a t-shirt we had to have the AC on in the car. Oh, it was lovely. So yeah, that kind of temperature to us is like the middle of summer. <laughs> and all I've got to show for it is an extra freckle. Terrible. Keep looking at my uh, phone when the comments stop. You have to keep talking to me, guys, about whatever you like, because I panic when uh, the comments stop. I'm like, please don't let me down the phone. Snow is forecast this Thursday. You're joking, Angela. Where? Where is that forecast this Thursday? Please tell me that's Scotland. <laughs> and not where I am. 28 on your patio, so Sarah. Good Lord, I'd be dying. Absolutely dying in those sorts of temperatures. 95 in Phoenix. What is that in Celsius, Christine? I'm actually not sure. So I'm just going to go in a couple of these wee corner bits and give this brush a nice rinse off so what we will do is while that's drying i'm going to dig straight in and do this little bit here because this ink tense is now bone dry snow in belgium as well cambridgeshire oh no that's very near where i am isn't it oh no <laughs> oh no no snow so i think i'm gonna put the yellow that i've used so again going back to color theory grab my colour wheel oh, there we go so we're of course we're next to purple here we're next to red and orange if we move the colour wheel round to yellow which I'm making an absolute meal of when we look at complementary and split complementary colours for yellow we go straight down to complementary would be violet split complementary would be red violet so I know that I'm safe to pop a yellow around here. It's not going to clash or look horrendous. 35, Christine. Oh, my God. I'd be absolutely dying in those temperatures. So here we go. This is the lemon yellow. Which I know works nicely next to these ink tense colours because I used it on one of the fish. So this will be how not to use it because going in straight lines is um, <laughs> not something that I find terribly uh, easy with these. So <laughs> be prepared of how to see how not to use them at this point, guys. Because I am officially hopeless. Hopefully I'll make a better job of it than I'm suspecting I'm going to. Yeah, see, I've already wobbled there. Oi, oi, oi. So good job I know the black fine liner trick to uh, to tweak this. I'm sure there's um, better techniques of how to use these. It's just not something that I know. <laughs> What's Liz saying? It snowed on April the 25th. Oh my God. We have had really bad snow um, here in April before now. I'm hoping that's not going to happen. So let's tweak this down right I'm just gonna swizz this round so it's just a little bit easier for me to see coming down the way rather than uh, sideways so they're using these these are already colors that I've used in other areas of the image so it just brings the top and the bottom of the page together basically this one's quite opaque as well this yellow one so oh flipping egg video has ended it says i know you said something else then because it's still live on my phone 
Let me just, oh God, Suzanne, check your life before you um, go to say something that rhymes with duck. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> that could have been interesting if I had to have edited that out, oh dear. <sighs> my mum would tell me to wash my mouth out with soap. <laughs> 